Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Looking Up at the Lights. My name is Jason Willis, along with my co-host, the co-host with the mostest, Adam Harder. Sometimes. Today we have intrigue, we have scandal, we have God Save the Billionaires. <laughs> Adam, <laughs> God Save the Billionaires is all I can say. It's it, it's always fun, the, the week after WrestleMania. We've got fallout from WrestleMania, we've got... AEW doing whatever the heck they're doing, and we'll talk about that in detail. But uh, I want to I want I want to give you something to chew on uh, to look forward to uh, during the podcast. So we're gonna hang on on talking about them for just a, a moment. <laughs> Adam, yes, sir. How was your WrestleMania? Uh, I watched it in between working, and uh, I liked I liked almost everything. It was a, I have to say it's. Easily one of the best WrestleManias I've seen in a long time. If I was giving it Meltzer star ratings, I guess, I would give it a four and a half out of five. There yeah. was only one match I really didn't like. Which match was that? I didn't care for the Street Profits and Bobby Lashley against Karrion and the AOP. Yeah, it was. A, it seemed a little like an afterthought, and also yeah. it, it was a little spotty in places. But uh, Montez Ford almost like flying into the third row that was pretty good yeah um and i'm you know how i feel about bobby lashley anytime i see him i'm a happy customer yeah i just i, I wish they'd kept the hurt business together and not yeah. and not trying to put together a, a, another group yeah it would have made more sense just to add montez and um dawkins to the hurt business than it would to try to tag bobby lashley on to the street profits or you could have even put the street profits in the in the six man the six-team ladder yeah. thing. Yeah, well, I, I, I think it would have made more sense. Why not? I don't understand. They have all these teams that aren't really teams right now, and they have the the longest reigning team in a long time, the Street Profits. I mean, they're still together. So for anybody that says, I'm never critical of WWE, let's just let me put let's put that aside, because there, the there was one thing I didn't like. I was nitpicking it but to death, but that, that was the only one. Um, everything else I thought came off. But that main event came off like a charm. Yeah, I um, I, I liked uh, I liked both main events a lot. Um, it was well paced. Just everything about it, I enjoyed thoroughly. The stories that needed to end ended, and now you have something to build on to build new stories, and then other stories continued. Um, people were surprised that Logan Paul retained his belt, and I knew somebody had to because yeah. there was a lot of title changes on this. Yeah, there was a night of uh, title changes. Oh, I think that was the only title that didn't change hands. Uh, and they didn't defend the women's tag. Oh, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so that that's going to stay the same. I've almost forgotten about them. Yep. Rhea Ripley retained. Oh, yeah, she did. She yep. did. So, she's, so she's still two, the women's world champion. Two champs. Yeah. Um, but that was about it. Two and champs then, retained, and we've got new champs all over <laughs> the board. And then uh, the only other thing that uh, I was kind of disappointed in and I thought it was going to happen, and it didn't because apparently there was disagreements on how much to get him out there and how much for him to do a run-in and all this stuff. But apparently the Undertaker spot was supposed to be Steve Austin. Austin, yeah. And That's being reported everywhere. Yeah, and he, I guess he's knee-deep in, like, hunting season and didn't want to leave Nevada and, you know, all this good stuff. I don't know what the truth is. I've heard everything from he didn't want to be just – one you know one guy in the in the mix of a, a, a ton of guys i heard they couldn't come up with a financial uh, arrangement I, i've heard, just heard so many different things but um i got excited when i heard the gong so yeah I, I, it, it didn't mess it up for me no I, either way i was going to be happy uh i was i literally lost my marbles i was like oh my god oh my god i was running around and my coworkers were like what's going on i was like you have no idea the undertaker's here <laughs> And so that, whenever it comes to rumors and things like that, like whoever is the most quiet is probably is telling the truth. And while everybody else is reporting that Steve didn't want to do this and Austin didn't want to do that, Stone Cold is posting pictures of his cats and he's running around with his chickens. So I don't yeah. really think he cares. Yeah, my um, my wife, who doesn't watch pro wrestling, so Denny has had enough of wrestling. Oh, oh, she's long had enough of wrestling. Yeah. I guess she just got tired of shenanigans and politics or whatever. 
but that last five minutes made her sit up in bed and was like, okay, I'll watch this. Yeah. Because here came Cena, and here came The Rock, and here came The Undertaker, and you knew, you know, WrestleMania 40 was like, okay, where are the surprises? They're all in the main, packed into the main event. Yeah, and I'm sure that there was, there were probably more surprises planned that didn't happen, but it, for me, it was just the right amount, because there was the equalizer for Cena, then there was the equalizer, The Brock, and then there was the double equalizer, The Undertaker, and it didn't... It didn't take away from store or from Cody because it was just evening the odds. It wasn't somebody coming in to save him. It was just evening the odds because uh, you know Jimmy was the first one out. Yeah. So Jay took out Jimmy, which their match was something on my something on my dog hair. Yeah. Uh, so there was just I and I really liked uh, Jimmy and Jay's match. Uh, I did too, and I and I've seen and everywhere else I I look on the interwebs, I it gets low ratings. Yeah, I was too, like, what was wrong with it? Oh, okay. So if if Jimmy and Jay throw eighty five super kicks, it's boring. But when the Young Bucks throw eighty five super kicks and have a super kick party, it's five stars. No, thank you. Well, that's in the opinion of some. Yeah, not mine. But anyway, no, I mean just. Uh, I don't know. I thought it was another classic brother versus brother matchup. Uh, J won, which was the right call. Yeah. And uh, you know, I, you can, you know, you can keep it going, or uh, you know, you can like, well, Jay, um, you know, go into the Monday after Raw. You know, Jay's now the number one contender for Damian yeah. Priest's title. So, um, you know, Jay's ascension in the singles ranks continues. So let's see. You know. Yeah, and that um, that I thought was good, and then now also we have that Jacob Fatu is is signed with is, WWE. Is uh, is signed? We haven't seen him yet, but no. he is signed. So and I, so that only so if you want to keep Bloodline going in Roman's absence and Rock's absence, yeah, you could the, yeah. So and honestly, I think Jacob. I mean, Jacob's bigger than his brothers and mm-hmm. his cousins. Um, so and I think he's the best worker out of all the Fatus. So I just I I think I think he's going to be the new leader of the bloodline. We'll see though. Yeah. What do you What do you think about this? That um, again being reported on numerous websites, and you can look it up for yourself. They're talking about Sheamus being the first challenger to Cody. Yeah. So Sheamus was there was a whole thing where he didn't resign, and then it literally sounded like the same thing with Drew McIntyre. It sounded like they were just. It's not that they weren't going to resign. It's just they got busy and didn't actually like sit down and resign. Right. Um, but it looks like Sheamus is is going to be the first one for Cody, which is is fine. Like I I like Sheamus. I like his work, and it's a different style for Cody. So and I mean, who knows? It could be interesting. I don't know. I was just it just surprised me that he was the first name that came up. Yeah, because I I think him and. Uh, him and Jay are going to have a really good match. Yeah, so. I was thinking. Yeah, I, well, he's not going up against Jay. Oh, he's going. That's Jimmy. Damian. Yeah, yeah, sorry, sorry, sorry. Though I thought they might throw Jay in that. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, in that mix, or um, certainly Randy Orton, it's got to be on there at some point. Yeah. Maybe they don't want to turn him again or something. Or afraid the the fans yeah. will turn on him or something. I don't Maybe know. Maybe he doesn't want to turn. Who knows? Uh, do you make that merch? They say the baby faces make the merch money. Yeah, and I, I'll tell you, so. I'll tell you what the the thing that made me the most happy besides um, our truth finally getting a win and winning a title. How about that? Yeah, and uh, my favorite meme now is like, did that wrestler you like finish his story and then it's our truth? Oh yeah, and yeah. That one killed me, and then that, that's a good meme. The internet's been on fire since WrestleMania. And- yeah, he uh, he was on fire himself with. Uh, He's talking to Johnny Gargano, mm-hmm. and he's like, Johnny Gargano, you remind me a lot of a young Shawn Michaels. Shawn Michaels. And I tell you what, if you keep it up, you're going to be just like Shawn Michaels one day. And the camera pans over, uh, and it's Shawn it's Michaels. Shawn Michaels, yeah. And, he's, and Shawn's just, oh. And, <laughs> uh, R-Truth, the guest that keeps on getting. Natu- uh, the national treasure that is R-Truth. My childhood hero, John Cena. Right. <laughs> It, it's, and our truth is like ten years older. Yeah, he is. He is much older than John Cena. <laughs> ten or twelve years, I think. Yeah, uh, our truth is like fifty-one, and Cena's like forty-seven. So no, he's younger than that. Cena's younger than that, isn't he? Oh, 
Are you sure? Yeah. I can't look it up because the phone's <laughs> recording. <laughs> uh, but yeah, we'll, he's, we'll get confirmation. I didn't think Cena was that old. Uh, uh, who knows? But I thought he was 41. Maybe. Who knows? I don't know. He was on top for a long time. Though, <laughs> though uh, <laughs> that bald spot, we got to do something. <laughs> <laughs> just, just let it go, John. Just, just yeah. Just release, unleash the hair. Just uh, he. Would, I wonder what he would look like bald. Kurt Angle looked good bald. Yeah. Well, I mean, Kurt could do no wrong. Kurt, no. Kurt, Kurt could never do wrong. I always say the same thing. If you're losing your hair, just shave it. Yeah. Like just. I mean, that's what I did. But who knows? You have to get some of that that paint, that spray on. <laughs> that, oh, I remember that. That just came back. Dun, 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 dun. But I was excited about that. You're I, losing hair. <laughs> You're losing. <laughs> when he says you can't see I'm me. I'm sorry, John. When he says you can't see me now, he's talking about his bald talking spot. Talking about that spot. But I, I was glad. Darn to, spot. I was glad to see that. I was a little disappointed that one of the surprises was not MJF, but who knows? I think uh, the competition needs MJF. <laughs> Very, very badly right yeah, now. Because <laughs> they, they don't have much else going on. They're probably Tony Khan is probably praying to the god of Adderall <laughs> that that MJF can heal up and come back. They they need him. But and they just, need something bad. Should, I mean Though I do the one storyline that they have it's shifting over to AEW here and the and the big kibosh that was Wednesday night. Um what was I gonna say? Da, 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 the da, big kibosh of no, but uh, let's be honest. No, um, MJ. We were talking about MJF. The one storyline they have of the one, yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Yep, the one storyline that they have is Swerve and Joe. Yeah, and it's like Tony Khan had an epiphany this week and says, you know what? We have a Samoan named Joe. Mm-hmm. We have a Rhodes. Yep, which. Turned out to be a meme. Yeah, uh, and let's do. Let's just do that. Yeah. And then uh, the they teased it at the beginning, and then smartly, which I, you know, left it for the main event, which I think your world champion should be the main event, or at least the semi main event. Yeah, it's it. I really, to me, it feels like, and he he's not this way, but to me, it feels like Joe's run, Samoa Joe's run, and AEW with the title has been very lackluster but not because of him no like he's pouring everything he's got into it and swerve is is a really good foil for him it just it feels like they're not putting all their eggs swerve is just over it's just it's one of the few guys that is yeah it it it, the same thing happened to it felt like to me same thing with mjf's run it never felt like they got behind him Mm -hmm. like and i I felt like that with every champion except for Hangman Page. They they pushed Page to the moon, and nobody cared. Nobody cared. And you had two guys that legitimately carried your company. Mm-hmm. Like it, Joe puts on great matches. He puts on great promos. He's going to be there. Yeah. And MJF, same way. And it felt like they just never cared. Everything else was 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 backstage drama and this, that, and the other. And then when they finally get away from it, they pull it back in. I think he was smart to not wrestle every week and, and just um, do promos and things like that. And when they started cranking that schedule up, mm-hmm. because it's like, oh, he doesn't work enough, da-da-da-da-da. And then working that style, it just it's not conducive to healthy <laughs> – yeah. Health, healthy people. They're they're you know they're wondering why all their guys are getting hurt. <laughs> so it, it's strange to me, and you'll ex- you'll know exactly what I mean when I say this. Why do you think it is that AEW loses money on their house shows, loses money on on shows, period, and rather than scale back, they ramp it up. Why? It's a lack of experience on Tony's part, I believe. Well, you would think you would think he'd have a little more business sense because he's you know he watched his dad do. I guess his dad was in charge of more stuff than he was. Yeah, it's just to me, if you're losing money on gates, if you're mm-hmm. giving away tickets, if and you're not making much money from your TV just, just deal, book smaller venues, book smaller venues, book less, like book less shows. Like, I would all, I would not be surprised. If 
in a year from now, we're talking about the dynamite zone or something like that. Yeah. It, like one central place where they have to tape all of their TV because, uh, you know, I, I don't know how much the man can afford to keep bleeding. But. No, at some point, you I know he's playing with, with billions of dollars, but at mm-hmm. some point, you you got to take a cold, hard look and say, I'm trying – so you can either be the same, different, or, you know, the alternative. Right. And – I think it's time to scale back to smaller arenas, do less shows, maybe trim the fat on the roster too. Well, they have. Yeah, they it, released ten talents. Yeah, which was the first time they've done that. Yeah, and they, they, I think they need to do more. Yeah, and if you, honestly, I think if you want to do that now, time is right to launch Ring of Honor being its own thing too, and let Ring of Honor just be Ring of Honor. Rampage should be Ring of Honor at this point. Agreed. Because, uh, I mean, it is, it's not going to kill the the rating either way. No. and so Because it, it's the least watched show. Yeah, just let it be Ring of Honor. You mm-hmm. have, like, Colt Cabana book it like it used to be booked, smaller shows. Because you and I have been to Ring of Honor shows. They right. were magic. Yeah. And, and there was nothing to it. There were It was no pyro. There wasn't a big screen. Like, it, it was simple. Well, that was even before Sinclair. Yeah. The ones that we watched. So, yeah, those was a... Uh, it, it, it just, I don't get it, like... You, uh, WWE makes a lot of money. And Cornette was there helping the book. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> but that's how far back we went with the Ring of Honor. When it just doesn't make any sense to me, and I was really thinking about it the other day. I was like, I would understand if they were doing gangbusters on tickets. They were practically giving away tickets when they were in town a couple weeks ago. Right, and they, it just. It doesn't make sense to me. I'm surprised the houses have dropped because that was that was the one thing. Even if the ratings were staying right around the same number, and of course those have those have fallen off too. But when they were staying around the number, they could still count on their house show business. Their house yeah. show business was doing um, fairly good up until like, what 22. Yeah. And then we we've, we've seen this this sharp decline. I mean, if you if you're putting three thousand people in an eighteen thousand seat arena, maybe you don't want to book an eighteen thousand seat arena. Maybe book something as it's five thousand. Yeah, yeah. It, honestly, book a smaller arena. It yeah. will, it will, it'll look something better. to make too. it look full. Yeah. yeah, just shoot it from shoot it low, mm-hmm. and and have do the curtains and things like that. Make it. I mean, when in ninety five when WWE was running school gymnasiums and stuff like that, like they made everything look big. They ran smaller venues. There's nothing wrong with that. I mean. Because you're not making, they're just not making any money. Well, there's, I was going to say that the, the, it's just a symptom of a larger problem. Because what we saw on Wednesday was, to me, one of the most unprofessional things that I've ever seen on a, on a, on a wrestling podcast. Yeah. The way to, I mean, podcast, I'm sorry, a wrestling <laughs> show. Um, how much further can you bury your own company? Because what you showed didn't have the desired effect at all. No. That you wanted. They thought they were going to embarrass CM Punk by showing this footage and what was going on while the Bucks were talking. You know, there's footage from, from live crowds that are there's CM Punk chants. Yeah. And there were CM Punk chants during the run in with Okada. So now the guy that helps you. Uh, draw. Uh, I think the rating was up. It's still not their their biggest rating ever, of no. course. But um, I think it went up from like seven seventy four to like eight nineteen or something yeah. like that. Somewhere somewhere in there, they gained around yeah, seven thousand viewers. They had a big spike, and so they had a spike, uh, which is going to be temporary because the guy's no longer there. Yeah. Um. You know, was that worth it? Because no, it was an, I mean, it was embarrassing. I thought for them. So, so you have two guys that aren't on your TV anymore, mm-hmm. and you have one guy that is currently working for your your competitor. Right. You, they are not. They are not competing with you. You are competing with them. Yeah. But yeah, you're. That's done. Yeah. That it's it, the whole thing where two years ago or three years ago when it was AEW is putting on better shows than WWE. No, they weren't. AEW is drawing more crowds than they. No, they aren't. It's just it's not happening. And now you literally put the focus on. They two, were just putting on better shows than they but, are now. Yeah, it, but 
now you're... But they were, they were never beating WWE. They're no. not going to beat WWE because no. the WWE has way too much of a head start. Yeah, and you know the crazy thing is, Jason, is years ago in like the mid-2010s, like the mid-aughts, what did everybody say? Oh, Raw's too long. There's too much TV now. Yeah, it's three hours. It's boring. Yeah. It's just not exciting. And now there is little, there's not as much WWE programming, and people want to see more of it. Yeah. And AEW has the exact opposite. There is more than there ever has been, and nobody is watching it. Yeah. So, Tonight so, is another sellout. Yeah. You know, for for SmackDown. It it's it just it it's at some point somebody really is going to have to sit Tony Khan down, get him Adderalled up so he pays attention, and then be like, "Look, man, run smaller shows, cut the fat, and you just sign the checks." You're like, going to have to run this business like a business yeah and wrestling is very unique like you can't you so your tickets are 17 bucks okay that's fine you can get the whole family out for like but one you got to make the shows family friendly like dropping f-bombs and having women talking about their 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 bodies and things like that and having these gratuitous violent matches that's not going to do it um so start there, build there, and then when you want to do your your precious blood and gut style, do it on a pay per view. And but you gotta scale stuff back. You gotta stop paying so many people so many mo- so much money, and you're gonna have to just run smaller. And also stop highlighting guys that no longer work for you. And I knew I I you don't even have to be a CM Punk fan. I knew. That they were going to make that man a martyr. Yeah, and you know, and he's got enough of a following. He he's, he spikes WWE's ratings. He just spiked your rating, but you you just embarrassed yourself because you're like you had this guy and you let him go. Yeah, for that. Yeah, you let him go over that. Andrade Andrade squared up punched Sammy Guevara in the face. Yeah, and he only got, you know when he got. Suspended, you know, he, he didn't get fired. Yeah, it's all. These... I don't think Punk wanted to be there anymore. I no, really don't. No, I think after he, he was unhappy. Yeah, after he worked with Joe, after he worked with, um, after he worked with Hangman Page and tried to do the Hangman style, which is not his style, and then after he worked a little bit with MJF, he he had done everything there was to do. Well, he said in the interview, he's like, you know, just let me go. Yeah, the separating everybody's not. You know, and I think if they could have all sat down at the table and said, okay, look, there's this real-life tension. Can we just squash it and make some money off of this? That would have been the time to show the footage. Yeah. That would have been the time to, you know, um, get everything cranked up and going. I think I almost thought to myself, this would be the time to bring Jack Perry back into the fold, into yeah. the AEW fold. Because you don't have you don't have CM Punk. Mm-mm. So you need the other guy, and you need to make him probably part of the elite, uh, make him a heel, and have him you know do the same whining and crying bit the EVPs are doing and say, look, and he's selling. Apparently, New Japan is selling those scapegoat shirts. Yeah, you know why? It, uh, send some of that merch money over to AEW. Yeah, and, and he's not doing anything in New Japan. Like I don't understand. It's like, it's kind of like. Uh, He's on loan, I guess, and I, I don't. I guess that's maybe part of the punishment. I, but if the guy's getting over over there, then you know. Yeah, and he's not getting over the way everybody else gets over in Japan. He's not. His style is not conducive no. to Japanese style. Like I, it's he's not really hard hitting because the Japanese like their wrestling the same way I do. They like as silly as possible. Or they just like punches and kicks. Or they like it tight as possible. Yeah, yeah. It, it's like everybody thinks the, the Japanese style is is um, like tons of hand springs and back flips and stuff like that. No, the two most guys that were over in Japan were Stan Hansen and Bruiser Brody. And what do they do? They punched and kicked. Just beat people up. Yeah, that's it. Um, Okada was the biggest star in Jap- or Japan's had in 20 years. And what does he do? Punch, kick, rainmaker. That's it. Yeah. Um, and Vader. Vader. When they had him. Yeah, but Vader punch, kick, slam, Vader yeah. bomb, That's Vader it. bomb. Yeah, it's it's simple, but Jack Perry doesn't have that style. Yeah, a big, huge, physical, 
American guys get over yeah. in, in Japan. Not It's not always the small, athletic, flippy guy. No, like, it, uh, so... It, but if Jack's my guy and I'm fired... Okay, I've already fired punk. the other guy. Yeah. So apparently I have more to, to blame on him than I, I didn't fire this other guy. I suspended him, but I didn't fire him. Mm-hmm. So just uh, bring him back. Yeah, now's it. And try... Bring him back now while you've shown that footage and try to make something if you can, if yeah. it's if it's possible. Carry the momentum. Put somebody put somebody with him. Put a Danielson or or Dustin Rhodes or somebody that can mentor this guy and say, "Okay, now we have an opportunity to make some money off of this. Let's try to make some money off of your name." Yeah, but not, they're not going to do that. What they're going to do is they're going to wait this out and they're going to wait and then when it dies, they're finally going to bring Tony it Tony Khan's going to get on X or Twitter at 4 in the morning and tweet something stupid. Yeah. Because he's watching, you know, he's, he's, I guarantee you that guy, and this is why Vince McMahon didn't do this. He's sitting there, he's reading every article, mm-hmm. he's watching every cage match rating, listening to the Observer, doing everything an internet indie person would do. And not trying to run this like a professional wrestling company. Yeah, I really think that. And I don't know the man. No. I'm just what. Here's what I observe. Here's what is being said. Here's what Punk says. Here's what this other guy says. And you know, having Osprey come out there, who could who could probably be your biggest babyface at some point, if if he's not already, because yeah. who else do you have? Um, to make a statement to what you know, what he make you're just I, I continue to poke that WWE bear. Yeah. Why? You know, do something that separates you from them and make people want to see your show. You're just driving viewers over to the WWE. Yeah. They had their put butts in the seats moment mm-hmm. this week. They had their Finger poke of doom moment this week. Yep. If if AEW goes out of business, we can look back to this one episode of Dynamite and say, boy, that's where they really jumped the shark. Yeah. That's my opinion. Yeah, and I don't think they're... Jay Scott, friend of the show, is that animated enough for you? <laughs> I, I also think that there are not enough WWE haters to, to keep AEW afloat. I think, in hindsight, I think the majority of people... Just like pro wrestling, yeah, they're not into the tribalism, Mm-mm. and there's not and there's not any real competition because they aren't going head to head on Monday nights. No, that the the whole WCW, excuse me, the whole WCW thing was completely different. Yeah, it was. I mean, that was like we're taking Vince on head up. Yeah, AEW doesn't do that, and they don't have. And right now, as hot as WWE is. I would not even dare to suggest that to anyone no. that you try to take them on Monday nights. That would be uh, you'd, you'd get slapped down harder than TNA did. Yeah, and, and here's here's speaking of TNA. Remember, I was gonna say, remember when TNA was the number two promotion in the United States? Yeah. Don't you miss that now? They are the number two promotion again because um, they they have stayed. And this is what TNA is doing better than AEW. They are running medium-sized venues. They are putting on quality television that is well edited, good sound, everything features right. They feature the people that you want to see, like Hammerstone's all on the TV. Uh, Josh Alexander. If it was just on a bigger network, if they had a bigger network deal. Yeah, if they just had a. There's no way. A lot of cable systems don't get access TV. No, and I have to watch it through um, through the Pluto app. Where, right. Yeah, and. And I, I catch it the next day or whatever. But I, it just so happens that the, the cable that I have has access. Yeah, so I'm able to watch it on Thursdays when I want to. And what, so. is, what is Scott DeMore doing? He is staying out of all of this. He's not mentioning anybody. Nope. And something that he's doing that everyone should learn from, Triple H reached out to Scott DeMore. He wants to start doing bleed overs, which is good. He wants to start mm-hmm. doing talent lending. Awesome. Like I will say a lot. I will defend Vince McMahon for a lot of reasons. One of the things I want to defend with is after ninety five, ninety six, he stopped doing talent loans. Mm-hmm. He just he if you worked for WWE, that's who you worked for. 
Triple H is like, no, you know what? Let's get Jordan Grace in here. Sure. Let's get um, let's get Naomi back over here. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, now that Fatu's now that Jacob Fatu's coming in, I Jason, you will know the the day that Alex Hammerstone appears on WWE TV. They're do- yeah, because I'll get twenty tw- uh, messages from you. Yeah, no. <laughs> you. I'm just kidding. It, I will explode with happiness. That my friend is on TV. Well, Alex is a good dude. Yeah, I, I love Alex Hammerstone. And I was like, he, like, TNA is doing it right. It, it, like, I, they're staying. Like, uh, the, the indie that he was working for in Augusta. Yeah. Heaped nothing but praise on his, his work, his professionalism. So, and I have no reason to doubt anybody that I've, I've ever heard that from. And, you know, and good for him being in, in, in TNA and, and right now is working with Alexander. So Yeah. It, and, yeah. you know, it's – TNA is in a really unique spot. And you know what's funny? As friend of the show, <laughs> you know things are bad in internet wrestling circles when the damn Disco Inferno has the best bit of advice for Tony Khan. And he's just – Tony, focus on your product. Yeah. What in the world? I can't. I can't rip on I, here lately. Yeah. You know, we did a we did a whole show in the past about what was wrong with um, you keeping know, keeping it one hundred uh, podcast and what we didn't like about it. I've listened to it for the last two months. I can't rip on it. Can you, Tony Khan? You are a miracle worker. Yeah. You have managed to bring together Eric Bischoff, Vince Russo, Conan. And Jim Cornette, and they all agree on the same thing. Yes. <laughs> on one point about you running your wrestling company, they all <laughs> agree on the uh, one congratulations, thing. Congratulations, Tony Khan. Congratulations, you are bringing people together, Tony Khan. <laughs> Pretty soon, he's going to have Vince Russo and Jim Cornette sitting down together. I don't. I don't and, and I don't want it, – it, it, it seems like bashing again. I don't want them to fail. No. The, pro wrestling needs AEW. They I do. believe, and Tony Khan pays people well, and he and for the most part, from what I hear, he treats people well. But you have got to lock it down and rem- and realize that this is not your fantasy league. This is not your your internet league. You're dealing with real people and real personalities. And the one and the one thing in this business that holds true, it can be a very selfish. There's only one top guy. Mm-hmm. Everybody else is like sharks fighting for that spot. So even guys that like each other, you know, can secretly be a little jealous. If you can come out of pro, re- I've heard this from other people too. If you can come out of pro- professional wrestling with one or two true friends, then you've accomplished something. Yeah. Because it's our nature to be competitive with each with each other. You're you're almost thrust into that position yeah. right away because. You know, say I'm the the manager on the show, and I'm the only manager on the show, and then all of a sudden another manager comes in, and I'm like, wait, what did I do wrong? Yeah. You know, especially if they're taking my main event slots. You know. Yeah. Then it's like, what do I got? Or my or my main event or my main event guys. Yeah. And all of a sudden I'm opening the show with you know this guy I have no chemistry with. No, you know. Yeah, it's it's human nature. We've all been in situations like that. So. Yeah, where you go from, hey, we want you to do the whole show to, hey, we want you to do half the show. And yeah. Like, all right, well, shit, what did I do wrong? Right. I, I got to step it up. Yeah. You know, it's like, it, it's, but, in it, here's here's my, my fantasy booking to turn it all around. Tony Khan just signs the checks. Just give everything to Dustin Rhodes. He's got, he's got the mind for it. He helps, I mean, by all accounts, he helped produce most of the matches now he's got he's and he's got malenko and and who yeah, else he's got dean still? malenko he's got arn anderson arn anderson still there yeah and i mean he's got the wrestling minds to be able to pull this off the thing that kills me and we mentioned this we mentioned this last week he had william regal he had william regal and jake roberts bro two of the smartest guys in the in the business yeah and What's one, of, cr- one of the best guys at booking finishes, you know, ever. Yeah, and what's crazy now is WWE hired a bunch of guys to be backstage agents. They mm-hmm. got Abyss. They got Bobby Roode. Yeah. Um, like, they got Jamie Noble. They got of, all some of these. Of the, a lot of the old TNA guys. Yeah. Well, Jamie, I think Jamie Noble's been in, yeah. uh, with them for a while. Yeah. And, um, or off and on, anyway. Um, Sanjay Dutt is there. Sanjay like, Dutt's uh, there, yep. All these guys. And and the, the best storyline, 
they have Jeff Jarrett. And say what you want about Jeff Jarrett. He knows how to book Jeff pro wrestling. Can, Jeff can do it. Yeah. If, if they're going to use Jeff, use his use his mind and his knowledge. Yeah, he's he's third generation. He's, because he, he's been through that fire with, with TNA. And, yeah, he, and, you he know, knows how it is. And Panda and, and all of that. All of that. He's yeah, been through he, the whole thing. And he's like, Jeff's there. Dustin's there. Uh, Arn is still there. I mean, you have you got resources. It's just yeah. yeah I tell you what, Tony Khan, if this ever use them. if this ever graces your ears for fifty thousand dollars a piece a year, me and Jason will run your TV. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, shoot, you might can get me cheaper than that. <laughs> <laughs> a couple Waffle House gift houses or gift cards, and we're going. I don't know. Well, I, don't know. <laughs> I do love some Waffle House. Uh, Not a sponsor. No, but I tell you, guess what? Guess what? We are though. We are WWE shop. We are now a WWE shop affiliate. So if you want to get the better, if you want to get better merchandise, if you want to represent a better company than AEW, the top. You want to get the the top gear by fanatics or the uh, WWE shop? Then go to the link in our description of this broadcast and use our link. And I think, uh, I know as of yesterday, they still had the, um, anything over $29 was free shipping. Yep. So if you want to get, you know, you want to get that, that title belt that you've been wanting. You want to get the Igloo collection with the Stone Cold Tumblr. You want, you want your bandanas, you want your foam fingers, you want your t-shirts, you want your merch, you want your pajamas. It's all there for you, the WWE fan at WWE Shop. Yeah. ShopWWE.com. Use our link. It, 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 it helps us, and it'll do nothing it but... It will do nothing but help the show and help the show grow, and, and we would appreciate it. And we'll uh, probably have some more affiliates to promote here in the in the very near future. We're, yeah. we're working on stuff. Yeah. Hair replacement therapy for me. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Squat. Oh, no, that's soap. Yeah. <laughs> Dr. Bosley. Yeah. Um, but, no, that's... That's all I got to say spray, about spray hair in a can. <laughs> but that's all I got to say about AEW is that they're just they're squandering. Jane's wigs. <laughs> <laughs> Moyer's wigs don't fall off at all. <laughs> but the and, most secure wigs made from real horse hair. Uh, he he got a bad in The Sopranos too. Who's that? The guy that played Maury. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he uh, he did that episode where he uh, gets Tony to run his brother-in-law out, and then Tony ends up owning the hotel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but yeah, that's man. WWE is firing on all cylinders right now. They, I just, and even the the feud right now with Rhea and um, what's her name, uh, little blonde girl. Oh, Liv Morgan. Yeah, Liv Morgan comes out and yeah. she's. Yeah, she's capitalizing on it, and like that's great. The stuff with the Uso brothers are great. Um, just everything is wonderful. Cody Rhodes, there's so many built-in stories there, and and there's things around the corner. We already have Uncle Howdy clues. Yep. Yeah, uh, Alexa Bliss is sure to come back at some point. Yeah, um, you know, there's people still out there that Braun Breaker and by the way on NXT, which I don't cover a lot, but on NXT, uh, Baron Corbin and Braun Breaker dropped the NXT tag team titles. Yeah. So now Braun Breaker is going to be a SmackDown regular. Good. He's on the main roster because he's he's my current favorite. I, yeah, I think I, I think his NXT uh, obligations are are pretty much up. Yeah, and the the crazy thing is he was making the rounds for how hard he was hitting the ropes mm-hmm. uh, last week or the week before, because everyone's like, oh my god, he's moving the ring. Yeah. I was like, yeah, he's. I was like, do you see how hard he is hitting? Yeah, the ropes? he's he's intense. Yeah, as as like he's a Steiner. There is yeah. there's no mistaking that. And I think Braun Breaker, and it's not just because you and I both love the Steiner brothers. Yeah. But I think he's the future. I think it wouldn't surprise me at all if if he's if he's the one to um to dethrone Austin Theory or not Austin Theory um Logan Paul or if he's gonna maybe dethrone Sammy. Although I hope Sammy gets dethroned by Chad Gable this week. So. Yes, we have the. You owe me a favor title match. Yep. <laughs> Which I don't. Sammy said, I know what you want. And Chad Gable wants the Intercontinental title. So yeah. we'll see. Yeah, it's. Uh, will Chad go full blown heel on Sammy or will they remain good good friends? So it's, They teamed up this week on Raw. 
So it's a it's a unique position because Alpha Academy started off as just like a throwaway, and now it's a comedy act. Yeah, now they everybody looks forward to to Alpha Academy. They look forward to the the vignettes. They look forward to all the internet only stuff. Like it's it, the Alpha Academy is everywhere, and everybody loves them. And so now, do you make Chad Gable a heel and? have him turn his back on the academy have him turn him back on sammy and be like this like wrestling machine only if you're going to push him yeah and i think you should yeah but the other problem is chad gale is so popular it would be hard to push a guy as a heel that's that popular yeah because you almost you didn't hear about it as much because maybe they didn't want to push that narrative but there was a lot of a blowback against sammy even though sammy got a tr- tremendous ovation in wrestlemania yeah. for winning the title uh, but blowback saying, man, that's Chad Gable's spot. Yeah. You know that yeah. they had a real built-in storyline going between Gunther and 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 Gable. Yeah, my uh, my best friend Ryan, when we were watching the the little bit of it, when it because after I was done with work, I went over to his house and uh, like I had the Intercontinental Title matchup, and it was a great match. Um, and he just looked at me stone cold, and he's just like, should be Chad. And and he's not a huge Chad Gable guy, but he it that's the that's it. Well, Where, he's been he he's been underused for a, a long time. Yeah, you, you know, and I I said it years ago when it happened. Uh, I, when they did the whole illegitimate Kurt Angle son thing, like it shouldn't have been Jason Jordan. It should have been Chad Gable. Yeah. And if and then it should have. Led I wish to, they hadn't split them up because they were a great tag team. Yeah, and you know Jason Jordan, you know, it's like God, God bless him. He's he's doing backstage stuff now because you know he's got all his neck stuff. But, yeah. Um, I mean, I loved him when um they were back in NXT and mm-hmm. Chad Gable was trying to get him to team with him and he'd be, like, I'm ready, willing, and gable like yeah, that right that got me and uh i just i think the world i saw some house shows where they were uh up against the revival which is now ftr and mm-hmm. AEW, and those matches were just tremendous yeah the the rolling german suplexes yeah. like everything like it's it, they were just they were incredible yep. and um so i think i think you got a built-in story there and, and can i can i Criticize one more thing. Yes, I'm going to criticize WWE. One more thing. Why is my guy Nakamura jobber to the stars now? It that you know I don't I don't understand. I just don't get it. <laughs> I don't understand it at all. You know, you, you, I'm hoping in the draft maybe they'll move him to SmackDown and do something else. It it goes. It's strange that he went from world title run. He went from working those incredible matches with AJ Styles. Um, winning the Royal Rumble, all these things to he's losing every. It's almost he as was, bad as he Solo. Was so over at one point. Yeah, I mean that when they brought his music back, the, the mm-hmm. uh, his yeah, name, the good one you can chant along. With. Yeah, that that was. I mean, that was all over the place, and then it's just and I really don't understand. Yeah, because I. You know, what hooked me on Nakamura was, I, I believe, um, my good friend uh, J- uh, Jamie Scott had shown me some Wrestle Kingdom stuff, or had or had linked me to the Wrestle Kingdom stuff, and I saw Nak- Nakamura, and I was like, "Oh man, this guy is is great." Then I heard he was going to sign with WWE, and I was like, "Oh," and I was just you know following him all over the place, and you know, uh, thankfully the revival facilitated the picture mm-hmm. <laughs> and everything. And, uh, you know, I was just a big fan of his. And it was like, man, they're going to push this guy to the moon because yeah. he's awesome. And now all of a sudden it's like, well, we turn him heel again. And he's losing to this guy. He's losing to this guy. And it's like, you know, is he in the doghouse? I just don't understand. I don't know. Because he, he was a Triple H guy. So yeah. Like, I decided, to, yeah. I don't get it. Me either. I just, I don't know. I know you can't push everybody and, and, not, and everybody can't win every match. But, I mean, just. Wow, he's losing a lot on TV. Do you think it would it would come back around to where if they started having enhancement talents again? I don't think it would hurt. Me either. Not on. I mean, uh, I wouldn't say every match had to be like that. Because back in the day, every match, unless you were going to the you know the house shows or, or going to they would you know they had the enhancement matches. They're trying to get you to go to the arena to go mm-hmm. to the, go to the live shows. Now it's different because you have you know. Uh, the network and you have the the 
you know, premium live events and stuff like that. Yeah. But it wouldn't hurt to, especially somebody that you're trying to get over, to have them work some enhancement guys, you know, occasionally. I I, I think it's it would be good for, for certain people, for the sure. La- the last time I remember seeing any enhancement. If you don't want them to lose, to, if you don't want them to lose to one of your stars, there's somebody you can throw in there from the indies or, or whatever, or your developmental group. Yeah. That can, you know, that can do the job. The, the last time I remember seeing any kind of developmental guys or, or um, enhancement talents was when Braun Strowman was doing all that, which right. I miss him. Yeah. Um, I just, I don't know where he's at, but I'm, I miss that guy too. I don't know. Um, but just, it's. They brought guys in for Ryback. They brought guys in for Strowman. Um, I think they're doing that a little bit now at Breaker. Yeah, yeah. He's uh he's just squashing guys left mm-hmm. and right, which uh, it, it the problem with only featuring contracted stars is eventually things are gonna go fifty fifty, mm-hmm. and you you get yourself in the in the corner where like oh, all right uh, you know and it used to be like there were there bona fide underneath guys mm-hmm. like if you saw. If you saw The Rock come out and Scotty Two Hotties in the ring already, right? Everyone knew what was going You're on. You're pretty much thinking Scotty Two Hotties going to lose. Yeah, but the the problem. Remember the one time he did put the hurricane over, which was great. Yes, which was incredible. Yeah. Uh, but there's not guys in those that position anymore. There's mm-hmm. not actual underneath guys that people don't care about. It's it's almost to the point where everybody on the roster has their their little sector everybody is a superstar yeah Uh, they're a wwe superstar yeah so you're you run into the problem where you don't want to see this guy lose but you can't have him not not lose sometimes yeah like it's i I think bringing back enhancement and you can't have him beating your top guys either yeah Yeah, so you got him to try to elevate you know to try to elevate him in some way yeah it just i think uh i think maybe enhancement guys are needed yeah it's a it's a conundrum yeah, sure. it's and I've thought about that for a long time. Yeah, but it, you know Nakamura, I, I worry about that. Uh, I, I just I'm curious what's going to happen with. I mean, I don't worry about it. I'm just saying that for a, for a guy that I followed so much, I just hate to see it. Yeah, that, and that's just me. I don't know if anybody else feels the same way. If you feel the same way, you know, drop yeah. us a comment or yeah. something. Yeah. I, I mean, it, we could be wrong. You could hate Sinsuke Nakamura. Say, hey, he, he's not that. He's not all that great. Okay. Yeah, I, I think I think Convince he me. sucks. Convince me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I would rather have Convince me. <laughs> so, and I, I'm really, I'm really apprehensive, but curious what's going to go on with the brave, uh, with the Bo Dallas stuff. Um, and I, I want very to, curious. I, I want to know what's going to go on with the Chad Gable thing. There's and it's just there's a lot of momentum. There's a lot of interest, and there's no matter which way they go, I'll I'll be surprised and happy. The future is bright, at yeah. least for at least for WWE. Yeah, AW step up your game. Yeah, future is bright for for TNA. TNA, TNA looks for, TNA is looking yeah, good. Yeah, but here we are. So speaking of future looking bright, yes. What, what do you think's gonna? What do you think the is the timeline for the Rock? What do you think's gonna happen? Timeline for the Rock. I would think a if he's filming a doing a movie, that's three to four months. Um, usually, typical on typical film, mm-hmm. um, the primary shots. I I I still think it's SummerSlam. It's like it's, it's like everything's pointing to SummerSlam. It seems like. Yeah, he was for the and, Rock, and apparently he wants to defend the People's title. Could could be Survivor Series, depending on how things go. I, I'm not sure which which project or projects he's working on. Yeah, who knows? So uh, probably something where he is in the jungle and sweaty. Yes, because that's all Rock movies now. Is yeah, he's rem- in the jungle in the and jungle sweaty. and sweaty? Maybe Kevin Hart will be there. <laughs> hey, Jumanji was was a. Uh, you know that made some money. Yeah, it's one, one, it's one just, of the last things it did. Yeah, I, just, <laughs> I make the part three. <laughs> yeah, who knows? But I'm I'm curious because I actually now now I, I, even after I I diminished it a little bit, I do want to see Rock and Cody now. Yeah, I, I didn't think I wanted to, but I do now. I I want to see Rock and Cody. It'll it'll happen down the road. I'm I'm almost positive that they're they're gonna go in that direction at some point. How dumb am I to the point where I thought that um, 
I thought that the title that Ali's daughter gave The Rock was the old WWF tag titles. It sort of had that same shape, didn't it? Yeah, that that's what I thought it was. Yeah. I was like, did she, I was like, did she just give him an old WWF? Thing? And I and I thought it was the Brahma Bull title that they never used, yeah. but it was different. No, this it did have a different design. Yeah, and it's because I saw this the two side by side, and I was like, oh no, it's that that's even you know a variation on that one. Yeah, I saw that, and I was like, that looks like the one Pedro Morales and um, Rocky Johnson had. Mm-hmm. And I was like, it looks a lot like it. I was like, how maybe it was. By design. Yeah, and I was like, oh, that's that's neat. And then I, I did feel a little bad when The Rock's talking about how much Ali meant to him and he's getting booed. Mm-hmm. But Yeah. <laughs> he's Philadelphia, do- though. Yeah, he's doing uh, – Phil- Plus Phil- he's, a, he's, he's a bad, bad guy. guy. He's, a, he's doing his he's job. He's a heel. Yeah. He's a heel. Don't feel bad for him. Yeah. yeah. All right, guys. Sorry we had to cut that uh, – we actually had to cut that episode a little bit short. We had a little bit of a technical problem, but don't worry. We'll be back, and we'll have all of our tech uh, issues resolved by then. This is Looking Up at the Lights. I want to thank Adam Harder for joining me this week, and we will see you next time on YouTube. Be sure to like and subscribe if you're on YouTube. If you're in, on your social media podcast platforms, don't forget to listen and download the show. Thank you so much for joining in. Have a great day.